Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this video, you'll learn how you can create higher quality luminosity mass and selections by optimizing your working gray space in Photoshop. You'll also see how Lumenzia version 8 can automatically take care of these details for you so you don't have to think about it, but it's important to understand how this all works. So let's begin by going up to Edit, Color Settings. Note that this is Command Shift K as a shortcut, and I'll be using this quite a bit in the video. We'll click on the color settings, and here you see a variety of color settings for Photoshop. The important ones we're going to focus on here are the working spaces. What a working space means is when there's any uncertainty, Photoshop doesn't know what to do, this is the value it's going to pick. So if I open an image and it didn't have an embedded profile, this is what it would pull. In this case, I've opened it from Lightroom with an embedded profile of ProPhoto RGB. So this is what's going to be used. If you're not seeing this in your info panel, you can go up to the top right and the panel options, you can check to make sure this is visible. But ProPhoto is what is come over from Lightroom for this image and is what's going to be used. So this sRGB choice here is ignored. But if I open up another image that wasn't properly color managed, maybe something from a scanner sometimes, if it didn't have a color profile, then that's what would be used. And you'd see a little hash mark in the file name warning you that there's no embedded profile. A more likely place you might run into needing the RGB space would be if you go and temporarily edit in the lab color space and come back, you might go to image, mode, lab, and then go image mode RGB to get back. When you do that, image mode RGB does not specify which color space you're going to go to. There's no pop-up option. You can't choose it there. And so as a result, it has to pick a specific one and it's going to pick your working space. So for me, if I ever go to lab and come back, I don't want to go to sRGB. I'd rather stick with ProPhoto. So I'm going to go ahead and change this here. So that's now my default. But again, you know, this is not something that's going to affect most photographers. Most of you are going to have embedded profiles and you're probably not working in lab or changing the image mode very much. But there is something here that is important and that is the gray working space, which sounds weird because this is the grayscale color profile and chances are you're not using this. Even if you're working only in black and white, you're probably using RGB. The reason this is important is grayscale is the color model that's applied to alpha channels, which are the basis of your luminosity masks. So when you have a luminosity mask or any layer mask inside of your RGB image, it's not an RGB mask, it's a grayscale mask, and there's no embedded profile for that mask. Instead, the working profile is what Photoshop's going to use to interpret the colors in that, or in this case, the, uh, the black and white values. And what's important is that the way that color profiles are constructed, there's something called a tone response curve, or what a lot of people will call a gamma, because it's a very common way of specifying it, but it's just the math that is going to help it determine how bright is a certain black value, a certain mid-tone value. And what you want is that your RGB gamma and your gray gamma are matched because if they're not, then a certain gray in RGB is going to come out to a different gray in your layer mask and with luminosity mass and selections that can turn out to be some pretty big errors that affect your image. So let's take a look at how this would work. But first let's switch to the correct value. You probably see dot gain 15 or 20% if you've never changed this. And what you want is usually gray gamma 1.8 or 2.2. In this case, the correct match is going to be matching ProPhoto RGB, which has a gamma of 1.8. I just happen to know that. In the written document, I'll list some other values for you. There's no way you can look at ProPhoto like this and know that answer, but 1.8 is the correct choice. So we'll say, OK, let's create a layer mask by just creating a new blank layer, and then Alt-click on the layer mask icon to get a black layer mask. Now I'm going to Alt or Option click on it so I can view it full screen. And this is a grayscale image in the mask on our RGB image here. So it's kind of mixing color modes within the same document. Now let's go click on our paint and I want to specify 50% brightness, which is 128 RGB values. Clicking OK, hitting B for my brush, let's shrink down to a smaller size and I want to use 100% flow, 100% opacity and 100% hardness. And I'm just going to write out 1.8 to remember how we created this, because that's the current gray space. Now I've hit I for my eyedropper, hover over it, you can see the RGB values are 128, the brightness is 50, everything matches as expected. But what's actually happening behind the scene is that this paint is in RGB, 
it's converted to the grayscale, but because we had the proper match of our embedded RGB and our working gray, it came out to the right values and everything looks great. But let's see what happens if we use different values. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift K or go to Edit Color Settings. And this time let's use the wrong value. I'm gonna to switch to 2.2. When I click on this, watch the 1.8. Watch what happens when I click. Notice that it got darker because the gray space is not embedded here. It's interpreted and as we change the working space, it's having to update the display to show us the proper interpretation of these pixels now. So let's click OK, hitting B for our brush, and let's just double check. The paint is still at 50% and 128 RGB, which makes sense because this is an RGB paint color. I just happened to choose something that already looked black and white. We'll click OK, and now we'll put down 2.2, and it's a different value. If I hit I for my eyedropper, notice that the RGB is 128, the brightness is 50%, but hovering over my original values here, notice that they've shifted to 109 and 43%. And that was what happened when we changed the gray working space. If I go Command Shift K again, take a look. If we just click on say like dot gain 10%, it's brighter, dot gain 30%, gets darker. So you can see how the gray values matter here. So let's take a look at the what this means in terms of a luminosity selection. So I'm gonna pick 1.8 as my gamma so that it's properly matched. This is the correct value. Click OK. Or I should say it's the proper value for this image. If I was in sRGB or Adobe RGB, I'd have to come back and change this. Every time you have a different RGB space embedded in your document, you should be changing your gray working space because it's the real-time matching of these values that matters. So let's click OK. Let's get rid of this layer. And let's create another new layer. This time, let's call it uh, matched 1.8. And I'm gonna hit Shift Delete to give it a black fill. And let's hide it for the moment. What I wanna do is create a luminosity selection for the lights, kind of an L1 selection. I can go to the Channels panel, Command or Control click on RGB to create that. You see the marching ants. Come back to our layers, make this visible, B for our brush, Let's make it much, much larger, but keep it at the same 100% opacity flow and hardness so that with a single click and brush stroke, we paint the whole thing in and then Command D to deselect. And this is now the correct expected luminosity selection where brighter parts of the image are selected and darker parts are gonna be not selected. Let's go create another blank layer. So we'll click on that. This time we'll call it wrong 2.2. Let's shift delete to fill it with black. And let's go and hide these. We'll create another luminosity selection, but this time using the wrong grayscale value. So let's command shift K. Now change our gray working space over to gray gamma 2.2. This is the wrong value for the embedded pro photo space. Clicking OK, go to channels. Let's command click on the RGB, go back to layers, B for our brush, make it visible. And again, single click and paint, and then I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect, and let's compare these layers. And you can see that indeed, you get a different result here, much brighter with the wrong value here. And let's zoom into the shadows here, and I hit I for my eyedropper. Let's just drop something down right about here, and take a look and see that with the match value, an RGB of 888, and with the wrong gamma, we got to 13. So the selection is a little bit more than 50% stronger when we have the wrong gamma. And if I were painting through a selection to make a mask for exposure blending or dodging and burning, that little bit of difference there matters quite a bit because it's 50% stronger results. And as I use multiple brush strokes, that error is just gonna keep building. So if I use the wrong gamma in this case, I'd be much more likely to start painting over the lines and spilling into shadow areas that I wanted to protect. And that's why it's so important to match these gamma values. Now let's take a look at what happens within Lumenzia version eight, because I mentioned that this is now taken care of for you. So let's delete these and let's take a look. We're in Pro Photo. Let's hit Command Shift K and we'll change our gray to just something that's clearly incorrect. 10% dot gain, doesn't really matter. Clicking OK. I'm gonna go and click L for a preview of a light selection 
And then when I click on cell, the moment I create this luminosity selection or for create a mask of any sort, Lemenzi is gonna go in and it's gonna fix that mistake for us. So when I hit Command Shift K now, notice that Lemenzi has updated the working gray space to gray gamma 1.8, so we get the proper results. And it will automatically do this for us, even if we use obscure spaces. For example, I could convert this image. Let's go up to Edit, Convert to Profile. Notice I have to do it here, not the working space. And let's change the RGB. Let's just use, um, oh, let's say Aces CG Linear, because I know that this is a gamma of one, which can cause some really bad results if you don't correct the working gray. Let's click OK. The image doesn't look any different because it's all color managed. But when we go and let's hit Command D to deselect, let's go click on L for our preview, cell to load it as a selection. Now when I hit Command Shift K, you can see we have a gray gamma of 1.0. So Lamenti is real time setting this to the correct and expected value. So you really don't have to think about these things if you're using Lamenzia version 8.1 or later. Lastly, I do want to note that if you prefer that Lamenzia doesn't do this for you, you can go to the menu, just simply go to the utilities, and you have this option that says automatically optimize gray color space. You can uncheck that, and then Lamenzia will stop making updates to that for you. But I definitely recommend you do this, even if you happen to work in the grayscale space, if you're embedding your profile, the working space won't matter. So this really is a very good thing to do for better quality mass and selections. I would recommend leaving that on. To learn more about Lamenzia, head over to gregbensphotography.com slash Lamenzia. And please be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified of future tutorials.